Good morning, good Monday morning, and welcome back for another week with us here at My 40 Wellness and giving you a soul medication for the day. Today we are picking up at the second half of James chapter 3. So I will be reading again today from the New King James Version. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. The wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything, every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is shown in peace by those who make peace. So, living out faith with wisdom. So we talked about good works on Friday and that when we become believers in Christ and begin our faith walk, we should have good works that become evident as the fruit of our relationship with God, especially for those who either were teachers or wanted to be teachers to believers. And James talked about the tongue in our words. So today we pick up to find out the how, how we live. And he is still talking to the sophos, the word here is Greek, S-O-P-H-O-S. And it's a Greek word meaning wise uh, for the teacher, a scribe, or a rabbi. And James is talking to these wise teachers, and he switched from our words that we talked about on Friday to today, our conduct in wisdom, requiring noble living with good works and humility. This conduct is explained as the proper attribute of true wisdom. And in verses 14 to 16, he gives some examples of earthly wisdom. So let's look hard at earthly wisdom and see if this sounds familiar. Hopefully not. Bitter jealousy and envy, contention, rivalry, selfish ambition in your words, and self-seeking. This really seems quite apparent with some of the things that I see when I'm meeting people, uh, whether out in society or even the things that roll, scroll across the social media. And also to boast or lie against the truth even. So as Christians, are we lying in wait for the chance of an intense discussion or debate with unbelievers? And then what we do is we rationalize it as being loyal to the truth, right? Because then it's okay. David Gusek has a commentary on James and says that religious people may be extremely provoking and defeat their own ends by overbearing methods. Right views and sound counsels may lose their effect if they are expressed by men who are self seeking, partisans, or unscrupulous controversialists. So how are we living out our lives with wisdom? If it sounds like this, James says, this is the wrong kind. In fact, this is not really wisdom at all, but it is deceiving, especially to the believers themselves, because if they keep toting how wise they are, won't they actually believe it? This is sensual wisdom, and the Bible calls it demonic. It's a character of the world, the flesh, and ultimately the devil. Then we look at the fruit of this earthly wisdom. What do you see? The fruit of this earthly wisdom is confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion, and all sorts of evil and vile practices. Is this wisdom beneficial in the world? Yes, it may set out to accomplish objectives and it can be even successful. But look at the end goal. The end result is confusion in every evil thing. So that does not sound like the wisdom that I want because 
As I pray regularly, Lord, please change my heart to want what you want for me. Change my desires to be those desires that will please and honor you. So as I pray that, those prayers, what kind of wisdom do I seek? In verses 17 to 18, these talk about the character of heavenly wisdom. What are the characters of this heavenly wisdom? What are the fruits? Let's take a look. First, it is pure. It's undefiled. It's peace-loving, courteous, and gentle. It's willing to reason. It's compassionate, full of mercy, and good fruits. It's wholehearted, straightforward, impartial, unfeigned, free from doubts, wavering, and inconsistency. There's no hypocrisy. One of the big, biggest objections that I hear with Christianity is that people say that, oh, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. We need to be forever full of love with a giving heart and conduct ourselves in a way that is consistent with, with his holiness, the holiness of God. I grew up with an example of talking Christianity and God was the center of our family and word. But when it came to the fruit, the wisdom, much of what I was exposed to sounded like this earthly wisdom, unfortunately, with partiality, a lack of love and offer. Often it was a conduct contrary to the holiness of God. So. I would encourage you if you're parenting or you're grandparenting or you have any influence in the lives of young children, it is imperative that you realize the impact, not only that your relationship with Jesus has on your little flock, but know that you sow the seed for whether these little children are developing earthly or heavenly wisdom. Are they listening to the latest political rants? What kind of wisdom does our conduct show? Is it focused on only this life? Because as I get older, I'm learning how short this life is. The first grandchild is 17, a senior, and just bought her first car. My baby, my very baby, just turned 33. Hardly a baby anymore. After both my parents passed, I, knew, I now understand the saying, being homesick for heaven and that longing to be with them again in their arms and without the weight and the baggage of worldly sin, but a lifetime of coffee dates, loving conversation, and endless fellowship. This is our hope. So what are we living out in respect to heavenly wisdom? Are we sharing our hope? First of all, do we have a political agenda or is our wisdom based on a pure motive without any sinful attitude? Second, is our wisdom gentle? Or are we beating our neighbors and loved ones, our coworkers and friends over the head with our religion? Being gentle is knowing when to forgive. Even when we know that someone is completely deserving of strict judgment, how can we hold strict judgment and others accountable to conduct that most likely they know nothing about? Remember, our good works comes from having a faith deeply rooted in Christ and abiding in him. Is it wisdom that is willing to yield? When we are approached by earthly wisdom, how do we handle it? Are we stiff and unbending? Being raised to be critical, I was guilty of stubbornness and obstinate behavior when approached by those who don't hold a heavenly wisdom. Barclay's commentaries quotes, true wisdom is not rigid, but is willing to listen and skilled in knowing when wisely to yield. Is it wisdom full of mercy and good fruits? Is it impartial? Is it hypocritical? Let's look at how Jesus or how James closes here. Now the harvest of righteousness and his conformity to God's will in thought and deed is the fruit of the seed sown in peace by those who work for and make peace in themselves and others. I hope that you are encouraged today to seek heavenly wisdom 
and go out and sow your fruit of righteousness and peace as you make peace. We'll see you back here tomorrow.